Meanwhile, though, sentiment from corporates has been more negative over the past quarter. The company Polcat has a way of analyzing real-time chatter on any topic on the web, and it's found that positive earnings talk fell from in the period from April to August, and that companies see the U.S. as more of a risk than a slowdown in China. Joining us now for more is James Law, and he's the CEO of Polcat, and he's here in studio with us. James, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, so tell us a little bit about how you're able to collect this data, what it is you guys do that isn't already available out there. Sure. Um, so Polcat's an international uh, leading business intelligence company. And what we do is look at uh, millions of pieces of content every day, uh, ranging from online news all the way through to social media, Twitter and Facebook, and turn those, uh, that analysis, uh, analysis into um, uh, strategic business insights for uh, senior business decision makers. So your clients basically come to you as a way to, to know on an aggregate basis what the chatter is Absolutely. and that way they can sort of do you know use that information as they will yes and uh, we do that real time we do that in all languages and we correlate it with structured data such as financial results share price uh, reputation to ensure that we're getting a full correlation of what's going on. So, uh, just describe uh, how, how that works. Is it is it an automated process? So you see how many times a company name is mentioned, or is it more of a manual process where you see what kind of shine there is around what, what people are saying about a particular issue? Principally, it's automated. Though we do have some human element that sits on uh, sits on top of it. We look at uh, um, key issues like uh, the key topics that are coming up across those millions of pieces of content. We look at uh, top countries that are being discussed, we look at top companies, top industries, uh, and critically we also use uh, uh, within Polcat um, our um, financial risk management criteria to look at where there are concerns around financial risk management. And so you've worked with example big oil companies, big banks who will want to know what kind of reputational damage is being done as they're in the headlines. Uh, what we ask too is if you could take a look at from an investing point of view at some of the trends, some of the chatter around companies and use that, almost turn that into an investment strategy. Um, and so for the second quarter, for example, that earnings season just concluded. Sure. So you took a look at some of the chatter around all those names and, and what have you found? Well, I mean, what we'll have, the first thing to say is that in terms of um, the discussion around first quarter compared to second quarter, uh, there's a 20% decline in positive indicators um, and that's also correlated with uh, looking at our financial risk management issues, um, a significant spike uh, in terms of concern around future earnings potential. So not good news for Q3 as we probably know. Um, although some aspiration for improvement in Q4. And available capital, one concern as you can see there, a, a top concern in fact. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, if we look at the, the financial risk management issues, then available capital is, um, uh, is by far and large the biggest one uh, with financial distress coming in um, uh, um, close behind it. And when we drill in deeper into that, uh, we see macroeconomic effects um, largely due to concerns around the Chinese economy. Uh, and also the euro crisis, but we also see significant concerns around uh, banking availability uh, and activity around m and a and also specific discussion around Asia and China and the u s yeah and if we, if we break it down by country, I was uh, just looking at the chart you 've brought along which shows the u s and China are the top cited countries how do we how do we interpret that? Are they uh, cited in a positive light or in a, or in a negative light sure so I mean overall, as we say there 's a twenty percent decline in, um, in in positivity between q one and q two uh, an increase in financial um, uh, risk management as well. Not surprising to see U.S. at the, uh, the top. We always would expect that. What is much more surprising is to see China uh, up there in, in second position. Um, there, that is a concern. That's about the Chinese economy. If we look at the Chinese content, uh, then we see a lot about uh, the failure of the equities market and, uh, and concerns around earnings potential in, uh, in China. And now just to spin it forward, what is it that, that I mean, there, what you could do, I guess, is eventually sort of offer investors on a, a real-time analytical tool or enough of a historical data set that they can then use this information in order to, to take a view going forward. Um, but what sort of jumps out at you when you go through the data, aggregate it, and then try to identify what, you know, what's going to happen in the third, fourth quarter and beyond. Sure. So um, obviously it's not, a, uh, it's not an exact science, but we've got some good indicators on that. I would say the most obvious um, um, issues are that, that Q3 is going, to be, is going to be very tricky, and certainly we see that in, in terms of the future discussions around uh, earnings potential with the aspiration for improvement in Q4. What we think is much more interesting um, is the impact of the oil and gas industry on the potential of other sectors to perform on their, um, on their earnings. So um, in Meaning Mine, we're looking now at an energy census to really understand that increasing impact of uh, oil and gas industry on other sectors and their earnings potential. James, do you have any evidence that um, can help us understand whether this analysis works? 
Yeah, I think in the end, uh, the, the beauty of what we do is it's about monitoring as well as looking into the future. So the way you can tell whether it works is by seeing whether what you predict is actually what happens. So we have past performance to demonstrate that our future predictions work. Well, a reminder for everyone tweeting out there that you're being watched. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, James, thanks for coming on and sharing with us. James Lorne, the CEO of Polcats.